Have you felt stuck in the messy middle of a painting before? In this video, I'm sharing my process and some tips to power through those challenging stages and keep your creativity flowing. Hi there, I'm Janine. I'm an artist and I share my creative journey on this channel. For a large part of the intuitive painting process, your painting might look like a big old mess. I've been working on a few paintings on paper that I eventually want to turn into prints. I focused on adding visual texture and both colours, but now it's time to start dialing some of that down. So these paintings are all now very busy. So I want to start adding a little bit uh, more lightness and also more neutral colours and um, just simplifying them really, which also includes uh, adding some larger, calmer spaces. So just want to calm them down because they're very crazy at the moment, if you can see. Um, so I've got a few new neutral-ish colours that I'm going to incorporate, incorporate and maybe also even make these a little bit lighter. I've got some white here and I'm also going to use some larger tools. So I've got this large flat brush. This is a catalyst wedge and just like a silicon scraping tool. And also this makeup brush that I really like that creates really soft um, marks. So let's start with this one. Another thing I thought here was that um, this pink, maybe I'll try and connect some of these pink areas and glaze over what I've got already to make some larger darker areas as well. So I might start with that on this uh, and you see all these marks that are made with um, water soluble media like um, Neocolor 2 crayons. I've sprayed them with a fixative. I've got this Sennelier HC10 which is very strong and it's the best one I've found so far. Um, um, there's three layers of that on here. It's usually not perfect and things still move around, but I don't really mind that for my process. Just keep that in mind if you're trying to fix your paintings. I'm actually going to start with this kind of scrubby brush for adding more of the pink. So I'm just going to add the pure pink, but I will layer on top of that later so you won't just see that pink. And I'm, I've added a bit of water just to um, make it more fluid and also a bit more transparent. And even though that's quite a bright colour, it, well, it is simplifying the overall painting because it kind of cor corrals all these colours into one shape. And I'm just sort of scrubbing over the surface. Also connecting this dark shape with this dark shape where it's a bit lighter in the middle. I'm going to let that dry before I do anything else on here. Now here I'll add some of this lighter colour but we'll need this is quite dark actually even though it's a light beige um so i want to add a bit of white to that let's use this palette knife so i'll mix that straight on the painting here and i'm not really thinking much about where i'm putting it at this stage yet this is dried up And then I'm going to use this bigger scraper and just kind of randomly 
go over some areas and cover a lot of what I've made here. And I can also scrape into that while it's still wet. I'm still staying very experimental. Add some of this light pink. So now that this color is still wet, this pink will kind of um, blend into the wet paint, create quite um, smooth transitions. This is actually quite a cool colour, so I might add a little bit of sure, maybe this yellow and then use my scraper again, mix this very roughly, but not all the way so you still get some streaks of colour running through here. also apply more pressure and then it will add more of a transparent layer. I'll scrape into that with my palette knife and reveal some of the darker bits. Yeah, I'm also going to add some of this pink. Now I'm going to try this um, makeup brush to wet it first. I'm going to dip it into the beige colour. Also, scrape into some of this. If you uh, watched my last video, you'll notice that I originally painted them horizontally and now I've flipped them vertically. That also really helps to change your perspective on them. So do flip them around every now and then. And also adding some of that pink. trying to find new ways to use a tool to create something slightly different from what I've already done before. I 
how to use this large flat brush yet. Let's do that. And this time I'll start with this pink, but maybe add a bit of white as well. Mixing it on the paper again. And add some of this other beige colour. Scrape into that again. I really like actually, especially this area. And I tend to just ignore that and then go over it, but maybe I will keep it for now. We'll see how it goes. So beige with white. What I like about lines is that they're connecting different shapes. So let's say you've got a shape here and a shape here. You can kind of visually connect that with a line. This is the one where I added some pink glazing earlier. So we'll now also add a light colour, whichever that might be. I could even just use what I've got left on my brush. I like this area here. Let's try and keep that for a bit. Now I want to use some smaller brushes and refine the areas even further. By smaller I mean like this kind of size, which is the largest brush you can get for from this particular series. I'm starting to look at the composition. So all my dark shapes are quite similar sizes. I could connect this to make this one larger shape. Let's do that. I'll mix up some kind of orange. Or get some of this dark red. That and just glaze over that. Well, the light colour is still a little bit wet. And this could also read as a light colour, but it's not quite uh, as a dark colour. It's not quite dark enough. 
I'm just going to use a little bit of the dark and add that on top. And maybe down here too. I'm not really looking at, at colour at the moment, I'm more looking at value. It's actually too easier to see when you're standing because I've got a better overview over the composition. I think this has to be dark again. It's not quite dry. It'll be easier once, once this is dried. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Yeah, maybe I have to wait until it's dry. I mean, I'll still make some sort of interesting effects. So in the meantime, let's do the light colours. Let's mix them up in my palette. Maybe something a little bit more blue tinted for a change. I've got this pre-mixed blue. I'm adding a little bit of variation into this light colour the same time as clarifying some of the more textured light areas, making them more opaque. Let's do that here too. Adding some, calming down some of these light areas. I don't like these marks. And I want to change some of where there was dark blue and I laid over it um, into this light blue, which I much prefer. I'm also repeating some of the marks that I've already got with this colour. Now I've put some blue next to this yellow, which makes the yellow stand out a bit more because it's almost a complementary colour. These are all really warm tone colour, doesn't really have any blue on here. So let's see what it looks like when I add some of this blue. Looking on this texture here. That stipple texture from the makeup brush. We've had a chance to dry a little bit and you see how much darker the acrylic um, turns when it dries. You might need to add a bit more lightness in there. But I don't want to add blue. Maybe not here. Um, let's go for something a bit more neutral. I'll mix some of this beige with more white on here. added some water to make it a little bit more transparent. I do like this but I think it's a bit too distracting.
might start changing some of these really bright colors to more neutral colors. Just get out a little bit on my palette. So it's like a dark grayish green and some sort of red. I'll mix these two together to form kind of a neutral color because green and red obviously are complementary colors. To be a bit more red. This red is already quite desaturated. It's all these blues that I'm not liking. Also, this yellow is too bright. Just want to do a bit of a glaze over that. Same up here, it's quite acidic. Now I'm connecting shapes again. I'm connecting this shape with this larger shape. Adding some red over this lighter area. I want to make this one shape. I think all this light area I want to be a bit darker. Let's try the green actually. Oh, too green. And some water. Yeah, the contrast between this and the light color is too much. So I may make some of these a bit more mid-value. Let's use the same color that I've got here. yellow here. I quite like this orangey colour. So I want to make all this here light, I think. to come over a little bit the light area. Maybe add some of that blue that I had. Maybe I'll add a little bit more yellow over here. Just to carry that on. Right, let's lighten this up as well. I think I need a bigger brush for this. Red in here. 
and I'm just bringing it in some slightly more neutral colours. Make this shape even darker here, and we'll use this dark red again. Maybe down here, I want a dark shape. it with a little bit of yellow. Bit of that green. I want to kind of continue this down here. change the colour and then even out some of these light areas. Keep this little texture here like that. And I quite like that these two bits are a bit lighter and then the rest isn't as light so we'll go over this one with um let's do that beige one. Add a touch of the dark red just to make the colour a bit more harmonious. And this needs to be a little bit darker. Not much though. Now this is really distracting me, so I'm going to make that darker. Let's bring in some light colour here. And I'll connect these two. Find this really distracting. Let's use that yet red again. With a little bit of water. I like this ridge here, but it's a bit too obvious. So I'm going to tone it down a little bit. Thank you. 
And then I want to darken some of the areas, I think. Maybe this here and also this. I'm deliberately not using the dark red because I like that it's overall a little bit lighter. I think I lighten this down here as well. Mix up a more yellowish light colour right here. It's maybe a bit bright. some of this yellow over here. I mix up some more of this beige with the white. It's been very hot so my palette dries very quickly. It's because I the paper towel underneath have dried. I've only just added some more water. on my palette maybe. Just lighten that a little bit. more interest down here. I'm going to turn this more yellow. I think I want the dark to come in a little bit further. I think this bit down here is very messy. I really like this but it didn't work with the rest so I'm painting over it. I'm just trying to make all of this darker. Let's use some water. I think I'll make all of this dark too. And I'm trying to decide whether I like that there's so much colour or whether I want to tone it down a little bit. I do like it for now. Let's see it for now. Let's turn this around because we worked on it the other way before. Let's try making all of this down here dark. Add a little bit of yellow to 
change up the color there. And I'll add a little bit more solid color. And I think I need to calm this area down. a little bit more dark up here. Back to this one. I think this one's a bit too neon. It's very symmetrical almost. It's this which is mirrored here and this which is mirrored here. So I could just make this. Yeah, this needs to be a bit darker even. I know I made it a bit darker earlier but that wasn't quite enough. And this as well. Right, so I think the pink I need to dull down a bit. I also think the yellow is a bit too much in some areas. I also like it. I think if I remove this, this will shine a bit more. Let's make this a bit more homogenous. I'll just light it up, already helps. And then up here, I like that it's not as light. We want to make that lighter. I actually might make this more pink. They're starting to all look quite similar. So I'm wondering how I can switch it up. This has already got quite a, bit, a few bits of green. Maybe if I make this light area kind of a green, a light green that is. This here I think is way too dark. Let's lighten that a little bit. By no means am I through the messy middle yet, but I can start to see compositions emerging slowly and the colours come together. If you haven't seen my last video where I started those paintings, then click the link in the description to watch that. Thanks and bye bye.